So here we are guys, I'm finally making a video that you've requested for quite some time, which is how to cull your wedding photos on an iPad. I've been calling on an iPad for probably the last two, two and a half years or so, and it has been totally transformational in the way that I've been able to take time that maybe previously wasted and turned it into productive time, um, time I'm able to get things done. Previously, I would call everything in Lightroom on the desktop, but the problem with that is that it required that I take my MacBook everywhere. And sometimes I find myself in places that it would be either too awkward to work on a MacBook, but for some reason not awkward to work on an iPad, or even like physical constraints. Taking a MacBook and working on an airplane is pretty much impossible now because of the you know distance between the seat in front of you and everything. But working on an iPad is totally doable still, and hopefully always will be. And you know, having everything in this form factor is so much easier than having to take away or take around this you know 16 inch beast so i guess let's go ahead and dive right in i'm going to do my best to explain this to you guys it's kind of like a complicated topic to I, I feel like explain in word form i think it's a lot easier to show you guys that's why i'm doing the video but i still might like skip over something or just kind of present something in the wrong way so feel free to drop comments down below um, shoot me an email or Instagram message or something and we can if you have more questions and I can clarify it and kind of make this a discussion also uh, I don't know anybody else who does this like Coles on an iPad but edits on like the desktop version of Lightroom but if you're somebody out there who does and you have a better way of doing it or if there's something that I'm overlooking or whatever by all means please let me know because I love to learn also so real quick, I just want to get some Lightroom kind of terminology out of the way. Lightroom on a MacBook, Lightroom on a desktop, on an actual computer is referred to as Lightroom Classic. Lightroom on a phone or an iPad or anything iOS is referred to as Lightroom, just Lightroom. That's what Adobe calls it, so we're going to roll with it. Um, and then the cloud that we're going to be talking about is just the cloud. So Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, Lightroom, the cloud. Cool. Okay, so the idea here is to be able to edit all of your wedding photos on a desktop computer, on like a MacBook or an iMac or something else, but be able to enjoy the benefits of culling and editing those same photos if you want to on the go using an iPad or heck even an iPhone. I use Lightroom a little bit differently than I think the software developers intended to, and I'm, as far as I, I understand, there's kind of two camps with Lightroom catalog usage. One, which is the way that I believe Lightroom prescribes, is have one Lightroom catalog for everything. So everything, one huge catalog. And the other side, which is kind of where I fall into, is one catalog per shoot. So I, as you can imagine, I have a ton of them on here and a whole hard drive full. I don't know, this is one hard drive and I think I have 245 separate Lightroom catalogs, which is a lot, but it also spans you know, the last three years or so. So I have the SD card uh, popped into this hard drive here and SD card reader combo. And we're gonna go ahead and sweep them into a client catalog. And then we'll name them I use tags just as a workflow thing. Um, I can make a separate video about that later if you guys want. So not started and we'll go ahead and drop this in. We're going to import, grab this SD card and I'm not going to import everything just for the sake of this video. I'm just going to grab, you know, a handful. So normally I have this little button checked here 
uh, make a second copy too and I have a version of all of the photos that I'm currently working on duplicated on one of those lacy like rugged rubberized uh, hard drives that's just always in my backpack but for now we're gonna go ahead and take off that option by the way if you guys are at all interested in workflows kind of in the context of backups and that kind of a thing my friend Ben Heish he's a wedding photographer up in the Washington area he has a YouTube channel and made a video about backing up and I highly recommend it it's amazing my workflow is pretty much the same as his I'll probably in the fullness of time come out with a video of my own definitely check his out it's awesome so drill down to the folder that we made for this client there it is and we're gonna go ahead and import. Great, okay, everything is imported and I'm going to go ahead and close this. Go back to my hard drive here. I'm gonna pop open a Lightroom catalog that's called Cull. You can call it whatever you want, um, but I call it Cull because I literally only use it for culling. Go ahead and open it up. So what we've done, we imported all of the photos from the elopement into the client's very own Lightroom catalog. And now we're going to take those previews that we rendered and put them into the culling catalog. Alrighty, so Adobe lets you sync only one Lightroom classic catalog with Lightroom and the cloud. So you need to have kind of like a middleman between your computer and the cloud. So if you're using Adobe's prescribed method of one catalog of Adobe Classic, you can just, you don't have to do this whole step. You can basically just sync that entire catalog with the cloud and it will drop all of those photos onto Lightroom on your iPad and your iPhone. Since I use one catalog per shoot, I need to kind of have a designated catalog that's kind of the go-between uh, between all the Lightroom Classic catalogs I have and Lightroom and the cloud and everything. So what we're going to do is take the previews that we generated in the client catalog and we're going to borrow them and put them in the Cole catalog and those are going to be what syncs with the cloud. Go ahead and go to, um, you can go by the way, hold down the alt button and see how import changes to import catalog. That's how I do it. You can also go up to file and then import from another catalog here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the Alt button and click Import Catalog. That's gonna bring up Finder window and we're gonna to go to Okada, which is the client catalog that we just created. Go ahead and click Choose. So we are going to basically be importing previews from this catalog into the one that we're currently working in, which is the Cole catalog. We want to make sure that we add new photos to catalog without moving. And what we're telling Lightroom to do in this instance is, hey, Lightroom, Go ahead and leave the original RAWs in the client catalog, in that Okada catalog, just borrow the previews. If we said copy new photos to a new location and import, what it's going to want to do is then ask us, okay, we can move the originals from the Okada catalog and put them anywhere else you like and reference them from there, where would you like us to put them? We don't want that option. We literally just want to take the previews and bring them over. So add new photos to catalog without moving. That might have sounded kind of confusing, but all we want to do is leave the originals and take the previews. So go ahead and import. Alrighty, so all of the photos have just been brought over and they're all imported here. What we're going to want to do is select them all, go to collections, create a new collection, and then let's go ahead and call this Cull and then Okada. We can go ahead and include selected photos, right? And we want this new collection to sync with Lightroom. Create. And here we are on the left, we have our new collection and this little squiggly arrow thing means that it's syncing with Lightroom and the cloud. Let's go ahead and pop over to the iPad. We'll open up Lightroom and you will start to see, here it is. It just popped up on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and click that little hamburger icon and then I like to say store locally and what that's gonna do is take those previews that we are currently having swept up to the cloud by our MacBook and it's going to download them onto the iPad itself using iPad storage and why that's important is because without doing that it will if you have an internet connection it will just reference all of the cloud photo like the photo stored on the cloud and make changes 
and sync them kind of in real time, like live. If you have them installed on the iPad, you can actually go offline, you can be on an airplane, you can be out of sail range, anywhere, and be making all of your changes, your calling, maybe a little edits here and there. And once you reconnect to your network, all of those changes will get swept up and synced with the cloud. So having them stored on your iPad lets you work offline and pretty much anywhere with them. So that's downloading right now. You can see so far 52 have downloaded of the 110 that we have in this catalog. But that doesn't stop us from going forward with culling right now. I use an Apple Pencil. It kind of just, this gesture, I prefer. You can also use your finger, either way. Kind of just test something out and whatever feels natural to you, go with. Pop open a photo and you want to make sure that you're in this starred section here, which is rating and review. So there's edit. I don't know if you guys have taken a look at Adobe Lightroom on an iPad before, but there's a couple different modules. There's edit, you have all your presets, you can crop, you have a healing tool, etc. cetera. Um, and you're going to want to be though in this rate review module here, this mode. And what that's going to let you do is it basically splits the screen in half. So the left hand side of the screen lets you star by swiping up for more stars, down for fewer. And then the right hand side of the screen are your flag options. So up for pick, down for neutral, and down again for reject. Everything imports with whatever flag settings you have. So in my case, since we just imported these photos, I haven't done any flagging on them, so they all import unflagged. So there's a couple different methodologies, I think, to cull photos. You can do it by picking. So you pick all the photos that you want to keep, um, or there's rejecting where you get rid of all the photos that you don't want to edit. I do that because it basically frees up the pick flag for some other use. Like the way I've used it in the past is to pick photos out of the finished delivered batch for you know blogs or adding to the website or something like that. If I had used pick as the way that I keep photos, like to designate like, oh, keep these, then like I don't really have that flagging ability or that flagging gesture to easily pick photos for like a selected batch of something. So I use reject. So I will go through and I'll swipe down if I don't want to edit it. If I want to keep it, then I'll go ahead and just pass right through it. That looks good. I'll reject that. Yeah, that one looks fine. That looks good. Uh, Good, uh, that's nice. Okay, I'll keep that one. That's a duplicate, reject it. Uh, reject that one. Yeah, that one's fine. Good, I like that one, let's reject that one. So you can kind of see how it works. It's really easy to, again, use the pencil or you can just kind of go through with your finger like that. So we can go back. You can see here 110 photos have finished syncing and downloading. Another useful way I've kind of learned to take time that I would have either wasted or just not done anything and turn it into actual productive time is maybe if you're waiting for a flight and you would be inclined to scroll through your Instagram feed for the 30th time or something. Instead, it's super easy to just pop open Lightroom on your phone and we should have all of those photos synced on here. Let's see, cool, Okada, we do. And we can just kind of pick up from where we left off on our iPad. So go ahead and let's go to the rate and review and see how easy it is to just kind of be productive. And so all those calling motions that we just made on the iPhone, they're also gonna be syncing up with Lightroom on your iPad and Lightroom Classic on your desktop. So now that we're done making all of our calling changes, we can go ahead and sweep all of them back into Lightroom Classic and sync those up. And then we can take the photos from Lightroom Classic, that calling catalog that we made, and push those to the client catalog, which we'll use to edit from and do everything else with from here on out. So let's pop back into the calling catalog on Lightroom Classic. And you can see here that all of those changes already imported over because we happen to have this open while we were making the, the changes. But if you had this closed, when you pop it open, you'll, you'll see a little progress bar up in the top left hand corner here where it's just saying like, hey, let me catch up with everything that you've done. It might take a few moments, but eventually all your changes will import in. And here we go. Those all look great. So give it a, again, 
if you haven't had this catalog open in a while, give it a few minutes to sync up everything. Kind of breeze through and make sure that what you're seeing is consistent with what you remember doing on the iPad. And once you're comfortable that all the changes have been synced up, go ahead and close the Cole catalog. And then we're gonna go ahead and pop open Okada, which is the client catalog that we were using. And then again, go ahead and hold down Alt and import catalog or go up to file and then import from another catalog. So we're basically unwinding what we did in the beginning. Go ahead and go to the external hard drive, go to Cull, pop that open. We're telling the Okada catalog now, hey, there's some previews in the Cull catalog that we wanna bring back over. Go ahead and do that. What we have here, these are all of the photos that are stored in the Cull catalog right now. Just don't mess with this catalog contents window. Come down to file handling and say don't import new photos. What that's basically doing is telling this Okada catalog, this client catalog, hey, we're about to bring over photos from the Cole catalog, which also has all of the photos that we've imported from all of the other client catalogs, right? Hey, there's a bunch of pictures in there. We don't want any of them other than the ones that belong to this one originally. So we don't want to bring any new photos over. If we did that, then it would bring over, it would bring over all of the photos that we have from all the other client catalogs. We don't want that. So don't import new photos. We want to go ahead and replace the metadata, develop settings and negative files. We don't want to preserve all old settings as a virtual copy. We're telling Lightroom right now, leave all the new photos behind, bring over just the changes for the photos that you have here, which is going to be all of our flags and stuff like that. Okay, so go ahead and click import. And what it's doing, you can see here, it didn't bring in any new photos, it just applied all the changes that we made on the iPad to the photos that are already here. So next what I do just for organization, and you guys can you know, create some system of your own that works for your workflow. I go to attribute and I select unflagged and I select flagged. Sometimes I'll flag them also in Lightroom as like, hey, I want this to be a preview or hey, I want this on Instagram or something. And we're gonna select all and we're gonna create a new collection and this is gonna be uh, edit. So basically what I'm saying is all of the unflagged photos and the picked photos, the pick flag photos, I'm going to edit. Okay, so out of 110 photos, I picked 95 to edit. And now I can either right click and export this cat collection as a catalog and I can put it on my desktop to edit offline or just on the go, or I can just close this and edit it right off the external hard drive from the office. I do real quick want to show you guys how to do some like basic housekeeping. So if, as you can imagine over the course of a year that Cole catalog is going to get full of stuff. I'm going to go to Cole for that client. I'm going to select all and I want to hit delete but if I hit delete all it's going to do is just remove them from this collection but it's still going to stay up here in all photographs. So what I actually want to do is go to all photographs with that selection still intact and delete them from there. It's going to say, hey, do you want to delete these? Are you sure? And I'm going to say yes, but all I want to do is remove them from this catalog. I don't want to delete from disk. If I delete from disk, it's going to go to that Okada client collection where it knows that the originals live and delete them from there. Not good. Not what we want. So just go ahead and click remove. Also, that can be kind of a scary moment for some people. The whole like delete from disk versus remove and like what if you click the wrong thing. That kind of points back to the need for a really good backup system. If you accidentally clicked delete from disk right there and you had a good backup system, it's no problem just to sweep those RAWs back in from whatever myriad of hard drives they might be sitting on and you're back in business. If that was the only copy of the wedding photos that you had, the ones that you just deleted, that obviously sucks. So. Put your photos in a bunch of different places. Put them on in a mobile, like a hard drive that you can take with you, like on the go, like in your backpack. Put them on a RAID array, like I do here, that sync with the cloud using Backblaze. There's a bunch of different things that you guys will learn from watching Benji's video. And I'll link that down below. So also real quick, just wanted to point out, if you go back to your iPad or your phone, you can see that the photos that we were just uh, culling through have vanished because you deleted them from here and now they're gone from here. And you can go ahead and either delete the catalog from, or delete the collection from here. 
or you can go over here and delete it this way too. And that's it. You go ahead and close it up and you're all done. It seems a lot more complicated than it is. Once you're kind of in the groove and you understand the system, it takes just a few minutes to make all of this happen. And remember, the benefit is that you can take all of these collections that you have here and put them in this call catalog and you can have, you know, jumping over here to the iPad again, you can see here I've done one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six collections here that I'm currently calling through. I finished five and I have one left to do. And that, a lot of times, it's me sitting on the couch, like watching something, calling through kind of casually in like a really comfortable position, or it's me getting to a shoot early, having some time to kill. I have my iPad so I can go ahead and take that dead time and turn it into productive time. You know, maybe at dinner, at a wedding, you bring this along and you just casually call through while you're eating dinner. The options for this method's usefulness are honestly endless and I really love it. Give it a try. Let me know if you guys have questions and hope you enjoyed this. See ya.